Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning uh, Sunday, the 26th of October and ending, I'm sorry, Sunday, the 26th of October, 2014, and ending Friday, the 31st, which is Halloween and the end of October already, 10 months into 2014. Unbelievable. Here's the uh, dollar index daily chart. You can see the uh, we got that seeker sell signal back a while ago. The risk line has not been violated in what is a true break of the risk line, meaning close above it and then take out the highs of that bar. So the risk line is still containing it completely, which is what it's supposed to do. It gave us a proper signal there after that big run up. That is an exhaustion if I've ever seen one before in my life. Uh, target for that uh, move, if we get a move down, would technically be the red static trend line, but I don't know that that's actually going to come into play. Just so far, it has caused a pause in the marketplace. Let's take a look at some of our major pairs here. Here's the euro dollar also holding the risk line. Look at that to the, the pip, the low of uh, Thursday was the uh, risk line. Here's the uh, pound dollar fluctuating around, didn't do too much this week. Aussie dollar dead flat. New Zealand dollar didn't move much and the pound yen has basically been here for about 10 months. So that's pretty unexciting. Um, we're going to move to the intraday action on the pairs, and then we'll take a look at the economic data that's due out this week. So here we go. Uh, Euro dollar, uh, basically for the week from high to low, 220 pips. It's all right. We had a couple of days with decent ranges. Um, only two, though, Tuesday and Wednesday. Those look like a return to norm. And then Thursday and Friday, we dropped back off uh, overall. The uh, Euro dollar lost a little bit for the week, about uh, not even 100 pips. Now here's a look at the pound dollar. And uh, this one, again, dead even for the week. Ended up closing where it closed last Friday, almost to the pip. High to low for the week is only 180 pips. So what looked like a little promising action based on a move up Monday, decent move Tuesday, move down Wednesday, ends up kind of fizzling out. We're net nothing for the week in terms of price action uh, on the pound dollar. And here's the Aussie. So I am back to full size because there's just enough signs of life, but so far we haven't really gotten anything clean. I just like to see the ranges be you know, at least 110 pips per day most of the days of the week, and then you get good level spacing and it gives you good setups for trades. Hadn't seen that a lot for the last uh, 10 months or so, but we're starting to see it now at least a couple days a week, which is all we can ask for. So uh, I'm going to continue to, uh, to trade back to full size until something tells me different. All right, let's take a look here at uh, the economic data. Uh, for the week ahead and get an idea of uh, what's coming out, what we need to be aware of. So, uh, first of all, we've got the uh, bank stress tests out of Europe. This is Sunday. you got a bank holiday in New Zealand, so go easy on your New Zealand dollar trading. SPPI out of Japan, uh, Monday morning, uh, Europe's money supply and private loans. Uh, UK CBI realized sales. Got the flash services PMI here in the U.S. Pending home sales is really the only major number, and that's not a big deal. Uh, retail sales out of Japan, Monday night. Going into Tuesday, German import prices, durable goods here in the U.S. Got the uh, S&P housing price index. We've got the CB consumer confidence number. That can move the market, but probably not Forex that much. Richmond manufacturing index. JI, we got the uh, dollar or the yen, uh, the Japanese preliminary industrial production number, business confidence out of New Zealand. We go into Wednesday already. Money, su money supply and mortgage approvals out of the U.K. German 10-year bond auction. Canada's got the RMPI and the IPPI. Uh, U.S. has got uh, crude oil inventories on Wednesday. Uh, oh, we have a Fed meeting this week, a two-day Fed meeting. Well, that's a bummer. So that's going to slow us down. Tuesday and Wednesday will be half size ahead of Wednesday in particular, possibly Tuesday as well. We'll have to see. Uh, so we get that rate announcement Tuesday after. I'm sorry, Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, New Zealand has a rate announcement from their bank as well at 4 p.m. two hours later early in their day. Uh, we've got uh, Canada's, uh, a speech from Canada's Bank of Canada Governor. HIA, new home sales out of Australia and import prices. Thursday, UBS consumption indicator, UK's nationwide HPI, Europe's German preliminary CPI. Um, Switzerland, we've got the economic barometer. Europe has got their flash CPI and flash GDP. German unemployment change. Italian 10-year bond auction. Uh, this is on Thursday in the morning. We've got the first look at uh, gross domestic product. This is a once a quarter number, the first look uh, for the third. Uh, well, this doesn't make any sense. The first look at quarter over quarter GDP here. No, that is not correct. 
There's no reason we would have that number um, already. I'm not sure why it's listing that. I think they have a mistake there. I uh, wouldn't have that number until, unless it's the third look and it's just labeled wrong. So that shouldn't be anything to worry about. Got the weekly unemployment claims data. Uh, Fed Chair Yellen, Yellen is speaking. Natty Gas, uh, building consents that night out of New Zealand. And then Japan, we've got the household spending. CPI data out of Tokyo and all of Japan, along with their unemployment rate. That's a big data dump at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time out of Japan on Thursday. PPI out of Australia, monetary uh, policy statement from the last uh, Bank of Japan announcement. Friday, housing starts, press conference for Bank of Japan, uh, German retail sales, French consumer spending, Italian monthly unemployment rate. CPI out of Europe, unemployment rate out of Europe, Italian preliminary CPI. Canada's got their GDP. Now we're into no, uh, heading into November. Oh, you know what? I take all that back. We are late in October. That is the correct uh, advanced GDP number. That's going to be the big one. I'm going to backtrack in just a second. Uh, Friday morning, employment cost index, personal income and spending, Chicago PMI, and Michigan sentiment. And then next weekend is the time change here in, uh, in the U.S. And so let's go back to that for a moment. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. That is correct. The first look at GDP from the third quarter, which ended at the end of September, that is a once a quarter number of Thursday morning. So we got a lot this week that's going to take us down in size a little bit because the market will tend to wait for the numbers and then spike. We don't like to get involved in news spikes. So you've got the uh, the night before the Fed is usually slow. So Wednesday night, uh, Tuesday going into Wednesday for sure. And then uh, Wednesday going to Thursday for sure, advanced GDP. That's a big, big, big number. Uh, we'll be a half size ahead of the two. Uh, Monday going into Tuesday is questionable. It's just the start of the Fed meeting. So we'll see. All depends on what the setups are. I'll let you know. Uh, as usual, we will be in the lab calling the trades, helping you out if you have any questions. Uh, if you have not taken a trial of our services, you can do so for $2.97 for two weeks. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal11. And we will see you this week.